All right, today we're going to talk about energy conservation and the Reynolds transport theorem. Well, technically we're just going to skip straight to using the Bernoulli equation, and you'll see that when you're dealing with energy equations, um, things tend to be similar. So we're going to do four problems, and by the end of this, you're probably going to feel like they're all actually the same problem. So let's get started. All right, here we have some sort of reservoir, and we have some sort of pump and presumably the pump is pumping water up from this reservoir um, and it's going out through here. So let's make a list of things that we're, we're given. So in the problem we're told some sort of volumetric flow rate and that is 220 meters cubed per hour. We're told temperature so that tells us density of water at that temperature. That's really what we were introduced interested in when we, we hear temperature. We're told the total friction head loss, let's call that HF, and we're told to find the pump power in kilowatts. Okay, so the first thing you should do is you should write down Bernoulli's equation, and that's going to look like this. So pretty similar to what we did last time. Uh, this is the equation we ended with. So the other thing is, now that you know what we have in this problem, we have a pump and we have a friction head loss, we know that there's no turbine, so this, this term is going to disappear. Uh, the second thing you want to do is you want to call, basically label your system. So we know we're going from this reservoir um, over to here. And over here we have this question of is one going to be at the bottom of this or is it going to be at the top of this? Well, the answer to that is going to be it's going to be at the top of this. Now, why do we do that? Well, we're actually allowed to choose whether it's going to be at the bottom or the top here, but if you're going to choose this bottom part over here, you need to account for the increased pressure at this depth. So if we're going over here, all you have to worry about is this triangle over here, which means we're at atmospheric pressure. But if you're down here, you're at atmospheric pressure plus additional pressure due to the depth of this column. And if you remember your hydrostatics, your manometer equation, you can figure out what that's going to be. And then you can just use the same Bernoulli equation um, and account for that. Of course, you're going to have to choose a new zero point energy. Um, so on that note, let's actually, since we're going to choose the top, we're going to make this line our zero point of energy. So we'll call this our zero point energy. So here the energy is zero, and above we start getting gravitational potential energy. So that's where this two meters comes into play. Okay, so now that we've done this, we should start labeling what we have at each of these locations. So at point one, uh, what's going on with these three guys? Well, at the first point, we know that our pressure is going to be atmospheric because of this triangle. We know that our velocity is going to be zero. Now, why is our velocity zero? So you might get confused and say, well, for pumping upward, then isn't there some sort of flow going up? Well, yes and no. So at the point we're at, which is just this right here, we're looking at a reservoir of water. And that means that the water is moving in all sorts of directions in here, but the bulk velocity is going to be zero, because there's no, there's no flow over here. Once you get into the pipe, um, there's flow, especially over here, but when you're just looking at the reservoir, the bulk velocity, or the, the total velocity of the fluid is, is zero, because it's not actually moving anywhere. And similarly, the height is zero, because we defined our zero point energy to be at this altitude. So we don't have to worry about this six meters over here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to do the same exact thing for our second point. And that's going to look like this. So at this point over here, at this two, we are again at atmospheric pressure because this is exposed to the air. Um, so these will cancel out. 
our velocity we don't know yet, and our height's going to be 2 meters. And I guess we should add that we have a head loss term due to the pump and to friction. And we're told from the problem that our head loss due to friction is 5 meters, and we're looking for our head loss due to the pump. And know that the head loss will actually be helping us out because it's on the, the left hand side here. It's going to be helping out the inlet because the pump's actually going to be supplying energy to help move the water upward and in the, the direction of the flow that we want. So taking all this information and writing out the equation once again, we get to here. So again, this is a zero because the pressure on both sides is the same, so they cancel out. Your bulk velocity at the reservoir is zero. Your height at our zero point is zero. And we have this friction term from here and this pump term that we don't know. And over here we have this velocity that we don't know and h sub 2, which turns out to be 2 meters. So here at this point you could solve for the h pump. And the, the last little puzzle piece you need comes from, well, guess where this came from? We were originally told the volumetric flow rate, and surprise, surprise, you have some sort of continuity equation going on. You're just going to get the bulk velocity times the cross-sectional area equal to the velocity at the outlet times the area at the outlet. Similarly, we're asked to find the power supplied to the pump. Now, if you want to find the power supplied to the pump, you should start thinking about uh, the, the energy that we're looking at. So the energy is going to be in the form of some sort of gravitational potential energy. Or you could say energy is represented by MGH because you're familiar with that. And you know power is energy per time. You know the gravity is not changing, you know the height's not changing, so the only thing that can be changing is this mass flow. You've known from previous problems that this mass flow term over here, this m dot, um, can be turned into rho times q, or the density times the volumetric flow rate, and then simply that g times that h. All right, as we go on to the next problem, you'll see that a lot of things are going to be almost entirely the same. So here, we have a turbine extracting energy uh, from a dam. We're actually given an expression for our head loss this time due to friction, didn't mean to cross it out, um, and we're eventually told that we want to find the maximum power supplied by the turbine, and the flow rate is given by this term right over here. So the next thing we want to do is again we want to write out that Bernoulli equation that we had before. So I'm just going to place that right over here. Alright, so once again, here's our Bernoulli equation. I don't have the pump term in here because there's, there's no pump. We just have a friction term and we have a turbine term. Notice that the turbine is negative because you're going to be pulling energy from the turbine, extracting energy from the penstock in the dam. Okay, so we're going to do the same, the same strategy we did last time, which is first we're going to identify the points of interest and then we're going to label based on these uh, what's important at those points. So the first one is going to be over here in this reservoir and the second one will be over here at this point. Which is sort of we're going to assume is an open reservoir as well. Um, it's a little confusing because you see something flowing out of the turbine but again this is an open body of water, this is in a pipe so it's not going to have any bulk velocity. So the assumptions we're going to make at the left hand side are that first of all we're at atmospheric pressure again because this this triangle they told you. Um, V1 is again zero, again misleading because you see this volumetric flow going in here, but over here in this region it's like a lake bed, you have no bulk velocity, so the velocity is actually zero. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to call this line here our zero point energy. So that's why we have this h sub 1 term equal to zero. We're going to do the same thing at our second point of interest. Again, they are telling us over here at this triangle that the pressure is atmospheric. We're going into yet another bulk body of water, not a pipe. 
so the velocity in this reservoir is zero, and we've gone down negative h, so that's going to be our height over here. Okay, so at this point, our energy equation looks pretty boring. It just looks like this. The only thing left is this friction term and this turbine term. And we're told we want the maximum power in the turbine. So we're going to solve for everything um, as if we're looking for the turbine. And that's going to look like this. Let's move this down here because we're about to do a lot of algebra. Okay, we're also told that our head friction was given by this expression here. Okay, so we could sub that in. It won't make too much of a difference, but we could sub that in. Okay, and just as before, when we were looking for uh, the power supplied in the last problem, you're going to use that same formula, that m dot g h, or that rho q g h, where the h is whatever you're interested in. In this case, we're interested in the power of the turbine, so our h is going to be the h of the turbine which we just solved for here. Okay, so if we're looking for the maximum power, uh, this is no longer a transport problem, this is a calculus one problem. So we're gonna differentiate the power in regards to what? Well, we're looking at the point of the maximum flow rate, so we're gonna differentiate the power uh, with respect to Q. So to make that a little bit easier, we're gonna distribute over here and we're going to get that. And then we're going to take the derivative, set that equal to zero, and solve for the critical points. So that's going to look like this. Okay. The rest is just math. Nothing too interesting there. So I'm going to write out what it becomes. You can do this at home if you want, and that's exactly what the problem is asked us to prove this statement over here. Okay, this third problem looks a little bit similar to the first one, and you'll find that again, nothing really changes too much. So again, we have a pump going on, it's going from right to left. I forget what I called one and what I, f what I called two. Um, it looks like I call, okay, so I ignore the problem, I call this side 1, and I call this side 2. So that's the convention I'll use. So the first thing you do, again, is write out your Bernoulli equation with your, your head loss terms corresponding to the problem. So here we have no turbine, but we're told our head, head loss due to friction right over here, and we're told that we, well, we see in the problem that we have a pump. So include the pump term and include the friction term. Okay, and at point one, we're told that we're at atmospheric pressure. Uh, we're told that this is our height. We could make a zero point energy if we want, but there's, there's really no need to. And this is again a reservoir over here, so there's going to be no bulk velocity. When we're in the pipes, we have velocities. When we're in the reservoirs, which is where we're doing our energy balance, uh, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so next, we do the same thing for the other side. Well, we're once again at atmospheric pressure. We're in a reservoir, so the velocity is zero, and our height, we're, we're told. So this makes, again, our final equation look a little bit silly. It's going to look like this. In this problem, we're asking for the horsepower of the pump. So we're really just looking for the power of the pump. So we're looking for this HP term here, and we're going to do our m dot gh trick once, once again. So let's solve for HP, and then we know both of these, these have a numerical value, 150 and 50, and we're given this expression over here for the, the head loss of the friction. So Notice we have a velocity in here, and we're told a flow rate. So again, we're going to use our continuity equation trick, and we're going to do Q over A to get that velocity. And that's going to look like this. And then finally, 
we're going to write out our power. And that's going to be this. So again, rho, q, g, and then whatever we're interested in. In this case, we're interested in the pump, so we use h sub p, and we sub everything in here. Now, what's going on here? So this 0.75 comes from the pump efficiency. Now you might think, all right, why wouldn't we multiply by 0.75? Well, remember, if your pump's only point, if, if your pump's only 75% efficient, you're going to need more energy to get what you thought. So if you're going to multiply by a number smaller than one, that gets you less. If you divide, it gets you more. So you want to divide by this 0.75, and that'll get you the actual power that you need. That when you, well, okay, yeah, you get it. So this will get you the power that you actually need. And then when that's multiplied by 75%, You'll, you'll get what's actually seen in the system. Okay, the last problem we'll do is again pretty similar to the other ones. So this time we write out our equation one more time. Notice that we're told we have this head loss due to friction right over here. There's no turbine, so I didn't include the turbine term. And we have this pump, which again, the pump usually does work for us. So we make that positive. Uh, check out these alphas in front of the kinetic energy terms. Those are correction factors. So they already told us what that is. You're just going to have that alpha right in front of your kinetic energy. There's nothing else changes. So again, what's going on? All right, well, I should call this 1, and I should call this 2. So at 1, we have a pressure of 120. Our velocity by the continuity equation is going to be the volumetric flow divided by the, the area. And we assume that the height effects are negligible. Otherwise, they're, they're pretty much at the same height. You could try to use these diameters to get a small change in gravitational potential energy, but there is really no point in doing that. They're going to be negligible. Uh, notice that we actually have a velocity this time because we're inside a pipe, we're not inside a reservoir. Uh, try to be able to tell when you're going to have a velocity and when you're not going to have a velocity. Likewise, on the other side, um, it's going to be the pressure given by this barometer, and then you have, by the continuity equation, Q over A2 once again, and the height terms draw back. So let's simplify our equation and we get this mess. So I've already gotten rid of those two height terms. And everything else is just, all right, we have a constant for this, we have a constant for this, we know all the numbers here, we know all the numbers here, we know all the numbers here. So notice this term here is actually our head friction in disguise. They actually just told us that up here. And I, for that V1, I used the continuity equation one more time and got that Q over A1. So really, the only thing they want to know in this problem is that pump power. So what you got to do is you got to solve this entire mess in terms of H pump, and then just use the same power formula that we've been using so far, that rho Q G H P. Okay, next time we'll try to deal with slightly more complicated energy problems using the monometer equation.